The new 2015 version of the MacBook Pro Retina is pretty much identical physically to uh, the MacBook Pros that we've been encountering for the past three years. But that being said, there are a couple of different features that might entice some of you guys out there that are in the market for a new laptop. Mainly speaking, the new MacBook Pro has the redesigned Force Touch trackpad, fifth generation Intel processors, a even faster internal flash memory system. Now the real question I want to address over here is, is the summation of all the little tweaks and features on the new MacBook Pro really worth it if you're in the market for a new computer and you're coming from an older generation MacBook or if you're contemplating the notion of whether to move from a Windows based laptop to an OS 10 laptop. So in this video I'm going to be discussing the pros and cons of the new MacBook Pro and see if it's worth your hard earned money. Now this new trackpad that we're going to come across on this MacBook Pro and indeed the new 12 inch MacBook is a different from other conventional trackpads in a couple of different ways. Firstly, it's force touch. So that means it's pressure sensitive and that adds a level of dimension and feel that you typically wouldn't encounter in traditional trackpads. Additionally, compared to most mechanical trackpads that use a hinge and spring system, there is no moving parts on this trackpad. It sits flush with the unibody construction. Now, the cool thing about this trackpad is that it actually gives you a artificial clicking sensation. Basically at the uh, bottom portion of the trackpad you have electromagnetic motor that emulates the sensation of pressing down on the trackpad even though the trackpad itself is not physically moving. So that means when you click down on the trackpad and the laptop itself is off, the trackpad doesn't move itself. It doesn't go down as you would normally expect. Now the moment you turn on your computer, the trackpad will come alive and as soon as you apply a slight bit of pressure on the trackpad, it'll give you a little vibration indicating that you've initiated a click. Now one of the benefits of this system is that since you no longer have a hinge, all throughout the trackpad you have the exact same consistent feel. So unlike a traditional mechanical trackpad where you can basically press down on certain portions of the trackpad, mainly the center or lower portion, now with this new system, the entire trackpad is one large button giving you the exact same consistent feel no matter which region you decide to click on. Now since the trackpad is pressure sensitive you can do a couple of different things like sign your name like you would using a pen. If you're watching a movie on QuickTime Player you can actually adjust the speed of the forward and reverse function depending upon the amount of pressure you're sending to the trackpad which is uh, certainly cool and handy. Pressing harder on the trackpad also enables a force click function, which essentially can replace the three finger tap function that you've seen previously in OS X. And when you have the force click feature enabled, you can do a couple of different things. So if you're browsing the web on uh, the Safari app, you can force click down on a specific word that you're unsure of, and that way you get a definition as well as a Wikipedia article. You can also get previews of links without having to actually go to the links themselves, which is uh, certainly handy. Now keep in mind that the force click function Function is really only available with Apple based applications. It would be really cool to see some force click or third click functionality in other third party applications such as uh, CAD software, 3D modeling stuff, photo editing. I could definitely see myself assigning custom commands to that force click function based on uh, certain apps and things like that. It's going to be really cool to see what developers come up with, but uh, currently, right now, they're only enabled in Apple based uh, applications. Now, uh, probably one of the biggest kind of functional downsides of the force click feature is that it's really hard to highlight text when you're in the web browsing app because again you'll pull up the definition even though you actually want to highlight that piece of text and additionally it's pretty hard to execute a simple click and drag command in the finder. You're going to have to find the right threshold to do so uh, because most of the time I found myself clicking too hard and getting the preview of that file because that's what happens in the finder and uh, I do a lot of clicking and dragging so having that force click click function definitely made things a little bit more annoying and you're definitely going to have to get used to it. Thankfully you can adjust the pressure sensitivity or turn it off altogether. Now the keyboard is identical to other MacBook Pros that you've seen. It's in fact identical to even the MacBook Air. It's still backlit which is fantastic and has plenty of key travel and it's very comfortable to type on and if you're used to other MacBook keyboards you're going to have no problem with this one. Now one of the big highlights of the MacBook Pro Retina model is certainly that 
gorgeous 2560 by 1600 display. Now, these days, you have a lot of Ultrabooks out there that actually surpass the quality and resolution of this Retina display, such as the Dell XPS 13, which has a resolution of 3200 by 1800. You also have the new Chromebook Pixel, which has an absolutely amazing display. And the one thing that's lacking is uh, certainly not resolution clarity because the Retina still has a beautiful visual experience. That's one of the selling points of this computer. In fact, because it's an IPS display, you have fantastic overall color rendition at pretty much every viewing angle. And the only thing that's really missing is a capacitive touchscreen. Now, Mac OS X would make a fantastic touch-based operating system. I'm sure in the future, Apple is going to go that direction. But at this point, we still don't have a touchscreen option on the new MacBook computers. Now, this new version does have some uh, slightly modified internal specs. Firstly, we have brand new internal flash memory. It's uh, rated for about 128 gigabytes if you get this stock configuration, which is plenty for, I think, most people out there. But most importantly, we have a brand new memory module that is PCIe based, but it runs at 4x compared to last generation 2x uh, speed. So that means we're going to get much higher throughput up to 1.6 gigabytes per second. And as you can see from my Blackmagic speed test, it even gives the Mac Pro a good run for its money. Now, if you do plan on getting a MacBook Pro, one of the important things you want to consider is what type of model you're going to be choosing. And you want to think ahead because uh, these days, the MacBook Pro and pretty much every other lineup of Apple products is completely unupgradable. That's including the RAM, which is pretty much integrated very tightly into the logic board. Although theoretically, it is possible to upgrade the SSD. They require so much uh, work and effort and you need a proprietary uh, Pentalo screwdriver to make that happen that is pretty much not worth it in the long run. Now the new MacBook Pro has been upgraded to the latest fifth generation Intel Broadware based CPUs. So we're using on the base model a brand new Core i5-5257U processor. And basically the difference between this CPU and the last generation Intel processor is that it's a more power efficient which is going to give you better battery life as well as it's slightly clocked higher. So if you take a look at the comparison of the, uh, this model versus last generation's model, it's uh, getting faster overall scores in terms of the CPU based tests, such as on Geekbench 3, as well as a Cinebench R15 benchmark. Additionally, in terms of the graphical capabilities, we do have upgraded Intel Iris 6100 series graphics, which is certainly capable for most of your casual games at moderate resolutions. So for example, on our Heaven benchmark at 1440 by 900 medium detail settings with no anti-aliasing, we got about 18.5 frames per second. And in most cases, if you're playing games like Diablo 3 and Torchlight, it's more than capable of delivering pretty decent overall performance with a very playable frame minutes. Although if you play any contemporary game at its native resolution of 2560 by 1600, it's going to be almost impossible to sustain frame rates in the low double digits. Now I use the MacBook Pro for approximately eight days. And uh, during my time with it, I was thoroughly impressed of what the battery can deliver. Now, basically I made sure that my behavior was as consistent as possible, although it wasn't perfect, but this is more of a real life practice practical battery life performance test than one that's more critical and scientific. So I essentially did a lot of light web browsing, a little bit of video streaming here and there, uh, no Bluetooth on, and uh, an average uh, kind of time frame of 10 hours and 38 minutes over the eight day process. So definitely not bad at all. Very similar to almost what you would get with the MacBook Air. So very impressive battery life and uh, certainly something that a lot of Ultrabooks have a hard time to keep up with. Now, just to sum up all my thoughts, we're going to do a pros and cons list to kind of give you guys a better idea on how I feel about the new MacBook Pro. Now, uh, firstly, one of the biggest limitations of a computer like this is the fact that it's very unupgradable. In pretty much every way, nothing is uh, changeable. So when you buy the computer, you want to make sure that you're planning ahead and making sure that all of the features and specifications are going to meet all your requirements uh, later down the road. Although, as we discussed, it is possible 
possible to upgrade the internal flash memory, the amount of hassle and the amount of labor that's going to go into that feat is certainly not worth it. Secondly, there isn't really an option for a discrete GPU upgrade. You're pretty much stuck with the integrated graphics that you have in your processor. And if you had that option like you do in the 15 inch version of the MacBook Pro, you would have a pretty sweet gaming machine. Now moving forward, even though the Force Touch trackpad is quite fantastic in terms of most of its features, one of the biggest problems I have is definitely the fact that it's very hard to execute a click and drag function as well it's very hard to highlight text with the force click feature enabled. Additionally the force click function is exclusive to Apple based applications and third party support is fairly limited at this point. Continuing forward even though the retina display is a fantastic display by its own right it's not top dog anymore. There's many other displays that are higher quality, higher resolution and have touch screen capabilities. Now even though you have a decent amount of connectivity options on the MacBook Pro you're still missing a couple of different things. Firstly we don't have HDMI 2.0 protocol. We are stuck with 1.4 protocol so that means if you have a 4K monitor you're stuck at 30 hertz refresh rate. It would have been nice to see HDMI 2.0 enabled especially on a computer from 2015. Additionally even though the new 12 inch MacBook is going to have USB type C connectivity it would have been really cool to see that port on this new computer because I'm sure you're going to get a lot of different accessories in the future that are going to have that USB-C port. Now the last thing I have to mention is that it doesn't have any fast charging capabilities. I've been using the new Chromebook Pixel which has USB Type-C and a fast charge built into it so it can uh, basically charge from 0 to 100% within about an hour and a half which is really darn incredible. It would have been really great to see fast charging capabilities on the new MacBook Pro. Now moving on to some of the features that I liked about the MacBook Pro. Firstly, it has an absolutely sensational battery life. You're looking at a battery performance that almost rivals up to the performance of the mighty MacBook Air. So very impressive there. No complaints whatsoever in terms of battery performance. Additionally, in terms of the footprint, it actually is a little bit smaller in terms of width and depth than the MacBook Air, which is quite ironic. And so if you need the ultimate kind of portable machine, that has the 13.3 inch size. This is one of the smallest computers you can get. Furthermore, in terms of connectivity options, we still have a good amount of selections. Even though they're not the latest generation of uh, connectivity, at least you have a decent amount of connections and ports for uh, everything you would encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. Another big improvement of this new MacBook is that fancy new 4X PCIe based flash memory. And it's really, really darn impressive to see how fast this computer can go. I'm not sure on how you can really make a computer faster than this in the future, but it's certainly impressive to see Apple really pushing the envelope of internal flash-based memory. Continuing forward, thanks to the new Intel Broadwell processor as well as faster 1866 megahertz memory, the new computer is faster than previous generation MacBook Pros. Furthermore, I'm really impressed of how well that haptic feedback system works, and I definitely would recommend everybody to go out and try this new trackpad if they haven't done so already, because it definitely gives you that sensation that there is a physical click there even though there really isn't. Furthermore, since the new trackpad is just one large button, you get the same clicking sensation throughout any regions of the trackpad, which is quite fantastic and is certainly an improvement from conventional mechanical based trackpads. And last but not least, I think this computer compared to most other laptops out there is a solid investment for both school and work. One of the biggest problems I have with uh, spending big money on a laptop is the depreciation. After about a year, the value goes down to the ground, but for some reasons uh, MacBooks, whether they be the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro, really hold their value. Even after the first year of use, you can typically get most of your money back. So if you're the person that likes to uh, switch around a lot and wants something that'll hold its value well and will be a solid investment for the future, uh, at least for a couple of years down the road, the MacBook Pros have always been a tried and true testament to that notion. But on that guys, that's really it. Make sure to give us a thumbs up. If 
if this video helped you out in any way. Let me know what you guys think of the new MacBook Pro. Do you think it's worth upgrading to if you're in the ballpark of perhaps upgrading to a new laptop down the road? And uh, we're definitely going to have a full-on comparison and review of the new 12-inch MacBook that's going to come out very soon from now. And uh, definitely check out our channel. We have a whole bunch of different comparisons on uh, both uh, comparing this to the older version of the 2014 version of the MacBook Pro as well as the uh, latest version of the MacBook Air. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you later. Take care.